Hey everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood developer advocate Mason Egger and today we're going to talk about configuring Visual Studio Code to be set up using the remote SSH plugin so you can develop remotely on a remote server. So you may be asking yourself, why would I want to do something like this? And actually there's quite a few reasons. Um, maybe the machine that you're working on doesn't have the appropriate resources. Maybe you need more CPU or more RAM to do uh, the work that you're trying to do and you know you want to be able to run your code briefly with that new amount of resources uh, then this is a good option for you. You may be doing something that is requiring a GPU sort of like a data science or machine learning or some AI uh, stuff and you may want to connect to a machine that has GPU resources. You may even be wanting to use um, a different CPU architecture such as maybe AMD or in, uh, versus Intel uh, and this will allow you to easily do that. You may be doing it just to have a simplified developer experience where you have all of your code in one central server and then you just connect to it from all of your different devices using Visual Studio Code. I know that's a good way for me to do it because very often I work on different machines depending on where I'm at and I, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh man, I left that code on my desk home desktop and I don't have any way of getting to it because I didn't, I forgot to do a commit, a get commit before I left or I wasn't ready for that and stuff and I didn't push my remote. So having all of my code in a central place and then just connecting to it via my IDE is actually really useful. And you may just want to be trying out a different operating system, you know, for development. Maybe you're on Windows and you want to develop in a Linux-like environment. Maybe you're on uh, Linux and you want to see, hey, how does this code run on a BSD-based operating system and vice versa. You could totally do this with anything that supports SSH. I haven't tested to see if you can do this with Windows yet. Um, maybe I'll do that in a future video. That would be kind of interesting to see if I can remote server into... Uh, a Windows box since Windows does technically now have SSH support. Anyhow, some of the prerequisites you'll need for this uh, tutorial or basically things that I'm kind of expecting you to already have set up that I'm not going to go over are you'll need to have VS uh, Code installed, which if you don't, you can easily just go to code.visualstudio.com and you can click the download button right here and easily download it. Um, you need to have a server set up already uh, that allows you to SSH in, uh, preferably as um, a non-root user, but you can do it as root, but I typically set up a, a development user for myself to make sure I don't, you know, always have admin powers all the time. It's yeah, good practice. And today we'll be doing this on Ubuntu 18.04. Um, really and truly, this will work on almost any operating system um, that supports SSH. It's not doing anything special with like Ubuntu or any custom installed packages. It's literally just doing uh, SSH remote execution, which is really cool. Um, so any Linux or you know Nix type system will work, but just for you know simplicity's sake today, we're going to be doing this on Ubuntu 18.04. Um, but feel free to do it on whatever you want. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and have Visual Studio Code open, and we're going to install the remote SSH plugin. Um, Visual Studio comes with a lot of really cool plugins. Um, as you can see, some of the most popular ones over here in their marketplace are Python and C and C++. You see it's started. I use Python a lot. Uh, but today we're going to search for remote SSH. And as you can see, there are two different plugins right here. Um, they will actually both be installed once you have installed remote SSH. So this one allows you to actually do the SSH um, like the connection and this one down here actually helps with editing the config files and doing a little bit of a uh, IntelliSense around your config files. So now that we have that installed, which was relatively simple, we actually can go ahead and uh, connect to our server. So if we come down here to the lower left hand corner, you're going to see this open a remote window green box with what looks like, you know, a greater than less than symbol. And it's going to come up and it's going to say, hey, what do you want to do? Do you want a remote SSH connect to a host? Do you want to open a config file or do you want to read the getting started? Um, we're going to go ahead and say connect to a host. Um, and currently we don't have any installed. So you can just do an add new SSH host here. Uh, if you are probably doing it by password authentication, you can just add uh, the SSH command and your uh, host name and it would work. But since we are going to be doing this through um, using public and public private keys, we're going to want to configure an SSH host first. So we click on that and we're going to go ahead and do it inside of our home directories SSH config. There is, at least on Windows, a uh, config on under program data, which you can kind of view as like the global SSH config for the client, um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do this on our local side. So we're going to do this with our personal user. 
So as you can see, we go ahead and get a default whenever we open this up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the host. This host config lets us specify what name or pattern we want whenever we want to access um, our machine. This does support regex, so you could do something along the lines of star.egger.codes, and you don't necessarily have to have the host name, and you could say, whenever I go to this domain, I want to use this user, and I wanna log in with this identity file, and all of that but for today's purposes we're just going to go ahead and say the host is devil.egger.codes that is the uh, development server that I have set up for this video um, the host name variable is actually what is going to be connected to so if you have the host name variable and you just say here devil.egger.codes um, it will connect to that if we did something in this area where like say on the host we did star.egger.codes um, whenever we tried to SSH in, it would match anything we put here, but it would always redirect us to uh, this host. So we're just not going to do that right now. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, it's kind of useful if you have subdomains that you know you need to use a certain user for, or a different uh, file for, or other, or sorry, different identity file, or just a lot of just a lot of different uh, really cool SSH config options. Or just um, I think you can do like some like if you have to do a different proxy command whenever you first log in to something on this subnet or something. Um, there's just a lot of options here. Uh, the SSH config is actually really powerful and I might do like a video on it soon because there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with it. So my user is Mason. That's the user that I'm going to use here. Um, this will be the user that you log in with every time you connect. And then the other thing you need is you need your identity file. And this is typically the location of where your private key is. So uh, when you've set up your server, you should have already have hopefully either used an identity file and set up a SSH key. Um, and if you haven't, that's totally fine. You can use username and password. This video is going to go over how to do it with a key-based authentication. So um, as in normal Linux systems, we it's in your home directory slash dot uh, SSH. And inside of Windows, there act, it actually does save it there as well. So if you see inside of my root directory user, I have a dot SSH uh, directory and I have a private key sitting there. So I'm gonna go ahead and say in my home directory in the dot SSH folder, let's go ahead and just use my private key to log into this. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this config file, close it out. We're gonna go ahead and minimize this extensions marketplace. And we're gonna say, hey, let's connect to a host. And now you can actually see that there is a host here that we can connect to. So I'm gonna go ahead and click connect on it and it will actually launch a separate VS code window. And it's gonna ask, do we want to continue with this fingerprint? Yes, we wanna continue. So now we come up with SSH, uh, devil.egger.codes. We can close my old one and maximize this. And now in this bottom left-hand corner, you can see that I am in fact connected to my server. And a real quick way we can show this is um, we can go ahead and do a uname-a and see that we are in fact on a Linux server inside of this terminal. Over here it is saying that we're using Bash. So we are now on a proper Linux device and I'm still on Windows. I'm still developing from my local desktop environment. Um, this is a VM if anybody notices the uh, the little pop-up up there. I am doing this inside of Hyper-V so I can have a clean environment for the, for the video. But um, you can see I'm connected to a server running Linux and that's pretty cool. So now let's go ahead and just do like a really quick, you know, let's install Python and do a really quick hello world. So we're going to install this extension. And as you can see here, um, if you remember whenever we install, installed the SSH uh, plugin, it just said install. But now on this one, it says install on SSH, you know, devil.egger.codes. Lots of plugins require you to install onto the device that you're using so this plugin will install on ssh and it's telling us that if this wasn't here then maybe you accidentally had the other one still open and it was going to install it locally which is fine but that means that it wouldn't have the plugin tools wouldn't have been installed on your server properly and you never would have kind of known it so whenever you're connected to your server and you know that go away windows taskbar um, you need to make sure whenever you're clicking install that it says install on ssh devil.egger.codes. There may be a few plugins that don't need to directly install into it, um, but most of the time it's going to say this. So just go ahead and click install. And it's going to install the Python plugins. And it requires a reload. Very often, whenever you install a new plugin like this, it needs a reload. Um, so we reload it real quick, and it's going to reopen the SSH connection. And now the Python tools are installed on our SSH 
uh, client. So as you can see, the local tools up here, as it says in the extensions, are installed. So on the on my local machine, I have remote and SSH, and that's my local machine is my Windows machine. But on my Linux machine, I have the Python tools installed for doing development in Python. So now let's go ahead and just do a really quick Python hello world. So we're going to say print hello Sammy. And we're going to, uh, yes, that is proper for Python. We are going to go ahead and save it. We're going to call it hello.py inside of my home directory. So it, you can create folders here, you can do whatever, but this it, these files will be stored on the remote machine. So you do need to know that like once you've disconnected and closed, you're not gonna see these files on your Windows machine. So don't freak out and go, where's my code? It's it's stored on the Linux machine. That's, that, that's the point of this. So we go ahead and click okay. And hello pi already exists because I did a test earlier. Yes, we're going to overwrite it. So we can go ahead and say Python 3, hello.py, and our Python script executed successfully on a Linux machine, on a remote server, but as you can see, I'm still developing on my local Windows machine. And isn't that just cool? And if you don't want to use the terminal, you can still run all of your code through VS Code the way you're used to. So you can go up to run and click the run without debugging or run, start with debugging if you want. And it does run the hello Sammy code inside of our terminal inside of Linux. And that's pretty much it. Um, sometimes I will say that the plugins that you install do require you to install extra things. Um, this one this time did not ask me to install uh, pip, but if you're on Ubuntu, pip is not packaged with the main Python, uh, what is it, a Debian file? Do they use .debs? Yeah, .debs. Um, so you may have to install like Python 3-pip so you can get pip on the system so VS Code can do all these installations for you. There are a lot of configurations you can do with this and you can spend hours tweaking your VS Code and installing plugins and doing things. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it helps you out uh, either by letting you test code on different hardware, test code on different operating systems, or maybe just having a consolidated place for all of your projects so that way you don't go, oh man, you know, I left that at home. I can't show it to you this time. Anyways, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.